You gonna be an artist? Hi, welcome to Mimi's Art. Today, I wanna to show you my workspace, my art studio, how I work, where I work, and what it's all about. Let's go in, and I purposely did not clean up anything because I want it to be raw and authentic. Okay, so here we go. Let's give you a big old shot of my workspace. As you can see, it's just a desk in my bedroom that I share with my daughter who lives up here, who was at school at the moment. And I might wanna remove that lovely little helmet, isn't it? <laughs> so no fancy studio for this one. This is just my bedroom and this is my setup right behind me. That's it, it's on a desk. Actually, it's a table, foldable table. I used to have a bigger one, I did. But because my daughter moved into my bedroom with me, because I have three other kids, and I, there was just issues sharing rooms, she moved into my bedroom. So that I was actually on the other side where her bed is right now on a bigger table. Now I have a smaller table and it's a pretty cramped space, I can tell you that. I can hear the cat meowing. Let, hold on, let me get let her out of a room. I think she's trapped in one of the rooms. <laughs> love you and then we'll go from left to right so this is my basket that has my paints in it so these are my acrylic paints here's my spray bottle with water that I use pretty uh, regularly this is my medium right here and oh look a kid's toy why am I not surprised <laughs> I've got a few older paintings back here as well anyway and like I said, as this is raw and I didn't clean anything up on purpose, eczema relief cream because my kids do have some issues with that. Let's put that away. I have more paints back here. The reason they are back here is very simple. This is my current project. Those are the paints that I have used so far on this project. If you follow me on a regular basis, you'll know that I put the, the colors in the description and that's how I keep them from getting mixed up with these paints. So anything I use, I keep behind my easel. There is my MacBook Pro. That thing is about to die. It is so old, oh my word. But it does the job. I use this for my reference photos, as well as listening to music while I paint. And then um, it's the same computer that I edit on. So I have that sitting right beside my easel so that I can look at my reference photo while I work. What I have under my easel is what I call a PP pad. Uh, it's actually meant for pets so that they can do their business on it. Absorbs water like nobody else's business. So it works really well for doing uh, my art. So that's what's underneath the easel. This easel itself was given to me and I, uh, I'm really happy with it, but I would like to buy a newer one in the future. I need a bigger one. It's not an issue. It works, but I, I'm looking for something that does not have like the you know, the wide open gap here. I want something that is solid so that when I use, in this case, this is a canvas board, so it's paper thin. Come on, focus. Yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> or even if I use paper from my sketchbook, which is hiding behind the easel, I, I would like to be able to tape it to something. And it's really hard to do here. I have used a really cool little trick to put it on. I might just make a short out of that. Note to self. So this is my plate that I use to mix colors on. Right now it's clean. I just cleaned it this morning. Okay, if you're wondering why it says Aaron back there, that is a note from my son. It's like an I love you note. See, love you mom. He's six years old and I, uh, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> oh, and this was a Mother's Day present for my uh, other son who is actually turning 15 today. So that is a uh, <laughs> mug of coffee because I like my coffee. Okay, moving on. We were talking about easel. So there's my easel and oh yes, these are the brushes that I have used in my most recent painting session. I like to paint in sections. So this is where I'm at right now with this painting. And I leave these down here because if I'm gonna be working, sometimes I split up the sections in different parts. Sometimes I don't remember which brushes I've used. So I leave the brushes used right there for my next painting session. Speaking of brushes, here's my little carousel that um, actually spins around so that I can easily access. Uh, I don't even know why there's a clip in here. What the heck? <laughs> access my supplies. Okay, let me sit down for a second. Uh, this is a little sketching pen. Uh, I have the brushes kind of, you know, 
together. Like these are all round brushes together, uh, like bigger, fluffier brushes right here. Then the big boys in the middle, my ruler for when I do a grid. Let's see. And here are some palette knives that I'm currently not using. This is actually crochet stuff. Yeah, they're stitch markers because I like to crochet at times too. I use a old mason jar as a water source, like water jug. So just for my paints to rinse them out and or sometimes to, uh, you know, thin the paint a little bit. All that fun stuff that's just right there. And I can tell you a funny story about that. Okay, see the painting jug? You see that it's empty? <laughs> that's on purpose. As you already kind of saw the cat, she's a little mischievous, that one. Um, there are times where I'm like, okay, I want to be ready to paint, so therefore I'm going to make sure that my station is ready to go. <laughs> and I would just fill that jug up with water. Well, guess what the cat does? Yeah, obviously cats will drink out of anything that is not, you know, their regular drinking bowl or station. But not only that, she knocks it over. I've had a few times where I would come in and that beautiful jar right there is knocked over. And it, I was happy with this pee pad under, the, under my easel. <laughs> Because it absorbed all the water, but it has happened at least two or three times. So ever since that, I stopped having that mason jar full of water. Uh, as soon as I, oh, you got to be joking me, lawnmower. Oh, they turned it off. Good. <laughs> so as soon as I'm done with my painting session, I dump the water and I do not refill it until I'm just about to paint. And then even then I'm like, where is the cat? <laughs> Back to my station. Right here and behind is an unfinished painting. It's a bamboo painting that's almost done. It's gonna go into our bathroom with another painting that I've done a long time ago. And this has been sitting here for probably a year. Moving on. Now behind there is my sketchbook, which is right here. Oops, sorry about the light. There's my sketchbook. Let me just stick it on the easel for a second. This was me practicing fur, horribly failing here, this bottom one. And not quite sure what the heck I'm doing there. But anyway, the other two look pretty cool. I don't use my sketchbook on a very regular basis anymore. But um, I try to utilize it. Sometimes when I paint, I have a lot of excess paint left on my palette. Like I squeezed out too much. I was a little too excited. Or I just happened to use less of that color than I thought. Then I will at times grab my sketchbook and do some things like in this case. Like trying to, you know, do some fur studies. So the chair that I use is just a regular old chair, nothing crazy, does the job. I don't have a fancy smancy desk chair or anything like that. You can also see there's a tote underneath here. That is full of old paintings that I've done. And I will maybe in the future do a video about uh, the paintings that are in there and tell you a little bit about them. As you see here off on the left, there's my ring light. And I will actually set it up for you in a second here so that you can see how I set it up for when I film. And the one thing I do tell you is that this little light that's clipped to my easel is not going to, this does not get used during my filming process. That's for my own personal lighting. But let me set up this guy. And uh, yeah, there's another funny story about that too. So as far as light is concerned in my bedroom and as far as lighting for filming, um, well, I have my main light right now that is on and I have light coming out from the windows and then I have the ring light and this is how I set it up. It's usually right beside my chair. I kind of tuck it in sometimes a little bit underneath the chair and this little gimmick right here will hold my phone. I do not have a fancy camera, not yet. It'll come in the future, but that's where I just plug or hook my phone into. And basically it sits right about here and you can actually watch like over my shoulder. This is usually the shot that you get when I film. Okay, I promise you a little funny story about the ring light. Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna pan over, ta-da. You can see that only half of it is working. Only half of the ring light. So what's the story? The story is kids move a lot. And what happened is that this little baby over here has been knocked over a few times. Yeah, so only half of it works and I would love to get a new one, but you know, I gotta get some money scraped together to do that. And then for the time being, I'm just using half of it. It seems to be working, especially if I have my blinds up, if I have all the other lights going, I can still get decent lighting for my videos. 
but I definitely need a new ring light and perhaps even another studio light that I can set up to get better lighting. But I work with what I have right now, you guys, and that's all there is to it. You know, you're gonna have to do what you can do with what you have, right? So there you have it, my little humble workspace, my teeny weeny tiny studio that needs shelves that are coming in the future to actually display some of my paintings and put some of the supplies up rather than having it all crammed into a small little space right here. But that's, that's where most of my footage is coming from. Small beginnings. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be over the top. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. What I'm really trying to, you know, accomplish on my channel is to just create a cute little community of people that can encourage each other, that can be inspired by others or can inspire others. And I would love to be kind of part of that as well. I, I would love to just see, you know, great and, and, and happy and positive communication between people. But at the same time, I'm just hoping my content is you know, helping you out in any way, shape or form. And just give me some ideas in the comments. What would you like to see in the future? Do you like these kind of videos? Me showing you around? Do you want more in-depth videos about certain things? Just let me know in the comments. Um, in the meantime, I am gonna have to rush here because I gotta go get my kids from school. <laughs> so stay happy, keep your peace, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Look who decided to steal the show. Be nice with your paws. Oh my gosh, when she started eating bread <laughs> on my bare legs. Yeah, fun. You gonna be a painter, Molly? You gonna be an artist? Oh, you are the art. Okay. <laughs>